But if you look at the current world today, everywhere you look, there are two powers ruling. There is the irascible power and the concupiscent power. There is the, 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 the dog soul, this is what Imam al-Ghazali called the dog soul and the pig soul. These are the two powers that are reigning. The people that are consuming and, and not recognizing that their consumption is killing them and then the people that are effecting their rage on the world. Literally going out and, and, and with rage in the world. The warmongers. The warmongers, whether they're spreading the weapons of war, and we know in our tradition that it's prohibited to sell weapons during times of civil strife in, in fiqh. The vast majority of ulama said it's prohibited to sell weapons when people are fighting because Islam does not encourage fighting. It, encourage, it encourages ending fighting. Every time they raise the, the flames of fire, God put those flames out. Muslims are supposed to want to put the flames of war out, not to ignite the flames of war. This verse that was recited at the beginning, and it was an interesting choice from, uh, from uh, Surah at tawbah but this verse that was recited at the beginning is a good example. You see, the, the Quran says, فَلْيَجِدُ فِيهِمْ غِلْضَ You know, they, the, the disbelievers will find harshness in these people. This is only during actual fighting. <laughs> But there are now Muslims that believe that this is simply the way we're supposed to be behave with non-Muslims. Whereas the, the Quran tells us, That God doesn't prohibit you from showing those who don't oppose you and persecute you religiously. Right? That you show righteousness towards them and that you actually give them a portion of your wealth. This is what Qadi Abu Bakr in his Ahkam al Quran says. Tuqsitu ilayhi means to be just, but he also says, that you can actually help them when they're in need. We just recently, I've been mentioning this for years, but just recently I was glad to see it. There's a Turkish filmmaker that wants to make a film highlighting the fact that in the 1840s, in 1847, the, 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 the great uh, Ottoman Sultan, Abdul Majid, sent shiploads of, of aid to the Irish during the Irish famine and, and sent pounds, uh, money, to help them. This is one of, it, 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 this was before the idea of, of global charity. This was before the idea of actually helping other people. And I would challenge anybody to show me uh, many examples of this in human history where people are suffering in one place and people in another place find out about it and want to help them out. This is a very modern phenomenon, the idea of aid. But Sultan Abdul Majid, he had an Irish doctor who told him about the suffering of the Irish people during the potato famine and the, the, the Anglo-Saxon people in England were not only not helping them, but in fact they, they were actually happy about it because it was removing a problem that they had, which is the Irish problem. If you don't believe me, just read A Modest Proposal by Jonathan Swift to see, the, although it's a sarcastic piece, it, 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 it identifies the sentiment of many English about the Irish. So this ship was sent to Ireland and the English were so bothered by it, they actually prohibited from being allowed to dock in, 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 in their their, uh, their uh, shores in Ireland. So the English that were controlling Ireland at the time did not want to, the, the aid from Turkey to come to the Irish. And so they had to, the, the Ottomans went down and they snuck it into a southern harbor. And that city today has a plaque reminding people of that fact. That th th this, is, this, is, this is mercy. And this is based on a Quranic injunction that human beings, wherever they are, should be helped. Algeria, during the great famine of, of France at the beginning of the 19th century, out the, the Bay of Algeria sent massive amounts of wheat from Algeria to France to help them because they were suffering, even though they were their enemies at the time. But there's something that transcends the animosity of, of politics and that is the necessity for us to reveal our humanity, to be muhtinun, to be people that do beautiful acts of goodness, of kindness, 
This is, this is the essence of human beings. The Prophet ﷺ was called a mercy to all the world. We only sent you as a mercy to all the world. This is our Prophet. He was a mercy. In fact, one, you have a, a brilliant uh, Afghani scholar here, and you're fortunate to have him, Dr. Kamali, uh, who writes extensively on Maqasid al Sharia. Uh, I, I had the good fortune of having lunch with him today. But one of the things that he says is the two fundamental Maqasid of Islam are Rahma and Huda, mercy and guidance. And I would argue that really they can be, be collapsed into one because guidance in, in itself is a mercy. That the reason God has given us guidance is because He's merciful. And the Quran begins, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim It doesn't begin, Bismillah ar-Rahman al-Hadi. It begins, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, to emphasize using two attributes of mercy, that that is the essence of our Lord is mercy. And the essence of His Prophet is mercy. And so Muslims, this is the tarbiyah. Tarbiyah is inculcating mercy. It's taking the child out of its cruelty. It's taking it out of its selfishness into a, a sharing creature, a creature that wants to serve others instead of be served by others. And then the ta'lim is the huda. So tarbiyah and ta'lim is rahma and huda. It's mercy and guidance. This is the essence of our tradition.